the sad event 40 years ago turned into another bond linking Palestine to Africa. I say this is yet another bond between Africa and Palestine because there were earlier bonding events. The story of Joseph and Moses between 1,886 B.C. and 1,446 B.C. You remember that story of Joseph? It was also a sad story, but it also created a bond, just like this one here. And then there's the story of baby Jesus being hidden in Egypt. I don't know which year. Because they say he was hidden there in the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. He was hidden there from Herod. Herod. Herod was a bad gentleman or something like that. Now, my people here wrote 4 AD, but I'm reluctant to read it because how could he be 4, 4 AD when he, was, he had just been born? There must be. I need to know more research on the year. But the story in the book of Matthew says that baby Jesus was hidden in Egypt from Herod. So that's another bond. Another bond between Africa and uh, Palestine, but born out of sad circumstances. Even for the Muslim religion, in the year 622 A.D., Prophet Muhammad had to flee from Arabia to Ethiopia. So again, the bonding between the Middle East, Palestine, and Africa in sad circumstances, but it is a bond. Then there is the famous story of the Queen of Sheba, which is found in the book of Kings, chapter 10, verses 1 to 13. The entire rescue operation of 1976 is therefore yet another bond between the two areas growing out of adversity. Your brother, Jonathan, some Israeli hostages, and some Ugandan soldiers were killed here on that night of the 4th of July, 1976. Fortunately, the rescue mission succeeded and the innocent civilians were rescued. As you all know, our movement, our political movement, is a liberation movement. Liberation movements only fight for just causes and never use terrorist methods. Therefore, 
for us when it comes to which war to fight. It is both about the cause and the method. You must fight for a just cause, but also use civilized methods in fighting. Even if a fighter has a just cause to fight for, he or she should distill his or her methods. Indiscriminate use of violence is criminal. Why target civilians and non-combatants? Even soldiers, when they are not armed, should not be attacked. That's our, 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 our doctrine. Even if, even if an enemy, a soldier is not armed, we never attack him. That's our doctrine. We are a liberation movement. We use violence to fight for the cause of Africa, but it is disciplined and purposeful violence, not indiscriminate violence. It is cowardice and criminal to do so. Targeting non-combatants, some people try to confuse freedom fighting with terrorism. No, you can be a freedom fighter without being a terrorist. Targeting non-combatants marks the boundary between freedom fighters and terrorists, even when the cause is justified. In the broader matter of the Israel-Palestine area, we in Uganda are guided by the Bible. In chapter 11 of the book of Genesis, verse 31, Abraham came from Uri. I don't know how to pronounce it. It is written U-R. I don't know how they pronounce it. But we pronounce it in our language, Uri, Mesopotamia, and settled in Haran, Canaan. This is estimated to have been in the year 2081 BC. There were other tribes in that area, such as the Kenites, Kenizites, Kadmonites, OTC, TC. Those tribes are mentioned there in the Bible. Besides, there is the story of the two wives of Abraham. Again, I pronounce them in our language. Shara and Hagara. I don't know how you pronounce them in your, in your language. But I, I am pronouncing them in my language. One is called Shara in my language. Another one is called Hagara. Therefore, we in Uganda... cannot accept the bigotry that holds that either of you does not belong to that area. When I meet uh, my friend, the Arabs, or the Iranians, this is what I tell them. The other time I went to, to Iran, and there was the, the man who was president at that time. The one who was president before this one, the one who is there now. Huh? Oh, huh? Ahmedijad. Ahmedijad. 
And I, I told him about this story. I said, uh, because he was saying that the Jews don't belong to the Middle East, that they came from Europe. That's what he was telling me. I said, no, but uh, I read the Bible. And here they are. The Jews are here. I had my Bible. I showed it to him. And I showed him where it was uh, being talked about. I also asked him something which he didn't know at all. In the Bible, it, it talks a lot about the, the Persians and the Medians. So I asked him, I asked uh, Ahmedijad, where are the Medians? We now know the Persians are you, are yourselves. But where are the Medians? He didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't know. The, the, nobody there knew. So they started asking each other, oh, 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 Moidian, Moidian, Moidian. They went and got a very old man from the university. He's the one who came and said, oh, the Medians were something, something, something. So I could see that in some of these situations, there is a lot of ignorance, a lot of ignorance. And uh, so I normally tell uh, my Arab friends and uh, our Iranian friends that you are all mentioned in the Bible. And here, I have taken some little trouble. I will complete my little speech. And I, I will quote the exact words when my little speech is finished. The story of Shara and Hagara in the book of Genesis, the two women. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, and verses 9 to 13. Incidentally, you Israelis, you need to know, these Ugandans don't know that you are not Christians. <laughs> they don't know. They think you are Christian. <laughs> Many of them know that you are the grandchildren of Ibrahim and all that, and so they, they, they assume that you are Christian. They, they, they don't even know. I think the priests are here. The priests must be full here. They, 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 they are always talking about you. As, as, but, but, but they think you are, you are Christians. They don't know that you, you are not Christians. We hear that Jews came from Shara and Arabs came from Hagara. Therefore, we in Uganda cannot accept the bigotry that told that either of you, as I've already said, does not belong to that area. The Romans upset the equilibrium by dispersing the Jews in the year 66 AD. Thereafter, the Jews suffered endless privations, endless sufferings, being victims of all sorts of hoodlums, such as Hitler, until the founding of the State of Israel in 1948. That's what the Prime Minister was saying here. The Jewish leaders wisely avoided the British nonsense. You know, the, the, our British friends are fond of 
sometimes doing all sorts of uh, nonsensical actions. The Jewish leaders wisely avoided the British nonsense of proposing to bring you to Uganda because you had no historical claim here. This was just nonsense. There was a character called Bolfo, Bolfo or something like that. There was a character called Balfo. I don't know how they pronounce his name. But that gentleman put out something called the Bolfo Declaration or something like that. And the, 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 the fellow was talking about Uganda. as a home of the Jews. You can see how these fellows are really not serious. Now, fortunately, the Jewish leaders rejected that nonsense. This is rubbish. We have no historical claim on, on, on Uganda. We came from Palestine, that's why we want to go back. Those Jewish leaders were very, very clever. Otherwise, we would be fighting you now. <laughs> no, th this man was called Bolfo, th that gentleman. That he was foreign minister. How can he be foreign minister when you are so ignorant? You went to where you had a historical claim, Palestine. Therefore, rationally, historically, and legitimately, the two of you belong to that area. The only way for you and for the world is for the two of you to agree to live side by side in two states, one Jewish and the other one Arab, in peace and with recognized borders. I know there are some people who try to, you know, waste a lot of time in these international meetings. That's why sometimes when I go there, I sleep because it helps me to, to survive the meetings. A lot of energy is expended on saying that Palestine is like South Africa. Palestine is not like South Africa. South Africa, you know, they try to say Mandela, the, the, the whites in South Africa, uh, non-racial state, non-racial state, South Africa. But, but that's a different story. That's a different uh, story. It cannot be equated. Well, I have never med mediated in the issue of, of Palestine. But if you invited me, I would give very clear ideas in a very short time. Because the issues are very clear. A lot of time has been lost, and a lot of trouble has been kicked up. But I, don't, I do not see any other way. Because they spend so much time on the right of the return of the refugees and all of that. But this is not. Uh... One day, if they invite me, I will give them my views. By the time the Israelis came to rescue the hostages in 1976, we had been fighting Idi Amin for six years. We had opposed Amin right from the beginning. Because as patriots, we knew that Amin would head in the wrong direction. It is actually some of the Western countries that were supporting Idi Amin. Therefore, Amin's hobnobbing with the terrorists was a crime in itself. Fortunately, his illiterate army had no discipline to deploy properly. 
Otherwise, it could have been impossible for the lightly armed rescue force to successfully extract the hostages. Amin was wrong to keep the hostages, and the Israelis were right to use the incapacity of that army to rescue the innocent hostages. <laughs> Terrorist methods are wrong, unnecessary, and a complicating factor, even when the, the cause is just. I salute the, mem the memory of those who died on that occasion on account of the cascades of the mistakes by the different actors. I praise the Lord for the lives of those that were rescued. Forty years from the side events of 1976, that bonding through adversity should be turned into opportunity. <laughs> Owing to the constant hostility by neighbors, Israel has developed into a high technology center. The huge and increasingly populous African continent of 1.25 billion people today, 980 million of whom live in sub-Saharan Africa through mutual beneficial arrangements, can take advantage of those scientific achievements for rapid growth. Israeli companies should come and invest in Africa. Trade between Israel, Africa, and third-party and third markets is also potentially beneficial. Then tourism, like this center here, should be a tourist center. These Ugandans are always going to Palestine for pilgrimage. They always go to Palestine, to Israel, to Bethlehem, to, to, to Mecca for the Muslims, to Rome. They are always going for religious uh, tourism. In summary, the key words are today, because now on the side of, of terrorism we are together. We stand against terrorism on principle. And we have been fighting for a long time, but we have never used terrorist methods, not even once, not even once. In summary, the key words are today, investments, trade, tourism, and technological cooperation, ITTT. I triple T. All of us would benefit. Down with terrorism, long live freedom of all the peoples of the world and justice for all the peoples. I thank you.